Yo, what's up YouTube? It's your boy Jayhawk here and welcome to Christmas Day action here in Season 3 of our Custom League. Our first season here on 2K22 on the PS4. Go ahead and just let that be known. I am on the PlayStation 4. But today, we have Christmas Day and like I said last episode, there are 15 games but we're only focused on one. And that's going to be the battle of first place in the East. That's the first place Illinois Steam hit the road and take on the second place Baltimore Barons. This should be a fun one. All these other games will be sim casting. If they're close in the fourth quarter, we will hop in, of course. Uh, the other games featured is the St. Louis Spirits on the road in Cincinnati against the Lions. We have the New York Empire in Montreal against the Huskies. The Nashville Enemies will be hosting the Iowa Pigs, the Arizona Rattlers on the road in OKC against the Lancers. You got DC, the Federals on the road taking on the Colorado Springs Ducks. Kansas City, the Bison at home hosting LeBron and the Richmond Rams. You got Nevada, the Warbirds at home hosting the Tampa Bay Sharks. The Oakland Oaks are on the road in Milwaukee against the Cheeses. This is going to be a good matchup too. Had potential to be the uh, Christmas Day matchup that we watched, but... When you got a battle of the first two, <laughs> the top two teams out east, yeah, that's going to win. You got Las Vegas, the uh, Outlaws are on the road in New York taking on the Nightmare. You got the LA Palms taking on the worst team in the conference, in the Eastern Conference, in the Carolina Cougars. Like I said, the battle of first place right there. You got the Minneapolis Lumberjacks, my bad, as they are on the road in Memphis taking on the Sounds. You got Atlanta at home on Christmas. The Thrashers will be hosting the Utah Range. You got the Minnesota Monsters on the road in Indianapolis taking on the Harvesters. And to finish out Christmas Day, we have the LA Knights on the road in Florida. So that's what we got for this episode. At the end of this episode, uh, we'll be simming up till to January 26th. And that is the anniversary of Kobe's sad passing which we will now call this Kobe day because we can't do 224 because 224 is during the all-star break so now January 26 becomes Kobe day and these are the games that are featured of course the first team to 24 wins the game the um, next couple videos after this we got Kobe day and then we, we will do the all-star selection show with some Valentine's Day action packed out action and then after that basically in the next couple videos we are going to get into looking at the teams that are struggling especially at the end of this video we're going to look at teams that are at the bottom of standings and then I'm going to make a Google Doc for you guys to vote on trades because we will have another trade deadline special like we did last year like we do every year but I'm, I'm talking way too much for Christmas Day action. So sit back and relax guys. It's time for some Christmas Day action. We will start the action in Cincinnati, Ohio as the Lions host the St. Louis Spirits. So let's get into it. Garland against Green. Burks in the corner. And out of bio, sends it down. up as fast as anybody to block shots. Eric Pasco, he's checked in for Seth Curry. Shot clock at five. Trent kicks to Garland. And they get it back. Misses the deep three-point attempt. Garland is out there with Gary Trent. Then there's Alec Burks. Then it's Eric Pasco. And it's ABC in at the pivot spot. Manning the middle. Yeah, coaches pet P there. No box outs. Those are free points you're giving away. We got to work harder on the class. At the line for Cincinnati. Precious. That one misses for Achua. Gone 7 to 16 from the field here in the fourth. That's about 43%. Burks kicks to Garland. And it's in there. And now. That's 35 points for Darius Garland. And obviously his momentum from the last game has carried over here tonight. You know that's how it goes with him. I mean, these hot streaks guys don't last minutes. They last days. Now, here's Garland. 
Excellent D there from Ball. Well, he's much better than that. Really no excuse for missing that lane. Here's Suggs. No good on that one. One item that stood out, their ball movement. Things are definitely clicking, and more importantly, it makes it really hard to defend. Relentless in their approach, even with the game firmly in hand. And, you know, until that final buzzer sounds, I mean, you've got to treat every possession like it's crucial. And it's wide right. It's off the rim. I tell you what, the defense should send Christmas cards for that miss. Here's Burks. Doesn't go that time. And it's Cincinnati the other way. I, I think it's safe to call this one a wrap. Yeah, I agree with you. Chalk it up. W in the bag. Garland against Ball. Now, here's Garland. And so it's a victory for the road team in this one. A truly gutsy performance away from home. You know, it, it really was. And Kevin, when this one was hanging in the balance late, they showed just what a tough-minded... Christmas Day action starts out with St. Louis, a seven-point road victory on the road in Cincinnati over the Lions. For the Lions, they were led by Precious, the two was 21 points. My boy Dez had 15, Lamelo 13, 10, and 6. Bam, 4, 14, no good. Michael Porter, 2 of 11, no good. But besides that, everybody else did their thing. St. Louis was led by Darius Garland dropping 35 in this one. Really great game by the future star. Pascal had 14 points off the bench. Jalen Duran had 10 and 14. Gary Trent with 9. Seth Curry with 7. Our custom prospect, Daniel Oco o o o <laughs> Jesus, Opoco had 6 points. 3 steals. That helps as they get the Christmas Day win. As you see the numbers right here, just going to go over and Scroll down here real quickly for you. Since I ain't never led in this game, that was crazy. But it was close all game. Just didn't get a chance to hop in. So let's move on to our next Christmas Day action. Out of the Kumpo, outside. Yes! They get the go ahead bucket. Kupo's got four points now in the quarter. Giannis attend Kubo is a star in this league, and more and more the team trusts him in those moments. We've got Nikhil Alexander Walker, also Andre Drummond out there, and it's Russell in at the one. That's what you need your bigs to do step up and control the defensive glass. Anna Kupo. Great to see attend Kupo going strong inside. At times, the D has no choice but the foul. Guys, what you take on the hustle stat for New York? Oh, their defense has been outstanding. Closing out on shots and blocking quite a few as well. Well, looking up and down the statue here, I'm seeing those second chance points jump out at me. They've done a great job on the offensive glass. Durant against White from 13. And it's off the back of the rim. No good. For New York, they've gotten 7 of 16 attempts to drop since the start of the fourth. That shot is off. Some solid defense from Drummond. Smith against Russell. Down low. Here's Durant. Shoots over White. Durant, no good. DeRozan against Russell. Smith outside. Pass to Ana Kumpo. Shot clock at six. Tries the nine-footer. It falls! Yes. Big time shot from young Giannis there. He feels more and more comfortable in these big moments. Outside Durant. A Kongu with the rebound. Well, if they score here, they could effectively end this one. Yeah, and their main objective is right now taking care of the rock and using some time. Now here's Ana de Kumpo. And so they foul intentionally. D'Angelo Russell. Second personal foul. Fifth team foul. So the first one drops. Shooting and that increases the lead Giannis to six. Well, a little bit each year, Giannis gets fouled at a higher and higher clip. That shows about how much more aggressive and how much more confident 
and how much more usage he's had through his first few seasons. He looked utterly lost trying to slow him down. He's consistently just getting high percentage shots because of how hard he's working. He's doing pretty much whatever he can to get open and <laughs> making the most of those opportunities. I'm telling you, the added pressure of the road really brings out the best in him. You can tell he enjoyed playing so well in front of an unfriendly crowd. And so it's a victory for the road team in this one. This was a hard-fought, well-earned victory for them. They had to dig deep to come out on top. Yeah, you know, some teams might buckle under the pressure towards the end. The crowd was... New York, the Empire, on the road in Montreal, taking on the Huskies, and they also get a seven-point road victory by a score of 105 to 98. KD leading away, 24 and 10 for the Huskies. D'Lo had 20.6 assists. Uh, we had Jeffrey Davion. He had 19 points. Also for the Huskies, good game all around. They had five scores and double figures. Everybody played their role the way that they needed to in this one. Just didn't have enough to keep New York from winning this game. Giannis 22, 8 and 8. DeRozan had 18. Justice Winslow had 16 off the bench. Caleb Houston with 13 off the bench. Derek White with 12 points. Just look at that. Really good game all around from both teams, honestly. Had David Duke Jr. 9 points off the bench. Dennis Smith Jr. did his thing. Really good team win. For New York in this month, as we go over the numbers real quick, just scroll down, give you guys a look, and another close game, another game that didn't see a double-digit lead, and it was basically close the whole way, so good game by New York to get the Christmas Day W, so let's move on to the next one. Nashville gets themselves an eight point victory in this one. Look at that. Our first three games, seven, seven, and eight point victories. Nashville's the first home team to win on Christmas Day with the 96 88 victory over the Iowa Pigs. B.I. leading away with 18 points for Nashville. Julius Randle had 17. Chris Darte had 17. Josh Giddy with 10, 7, and 5. Where's my boy Zay Phil? Oh, yeah, he's hurt. My bad. My bad, Zay. Forgot you were hurt. Everybody played their role in this one. For them, for Iowa, Fred Van Vliet leading the way with 17 points. Jabari Smith Jr. had 16 and 10. Terry Rozier, 13. Kevin Herter had 13. DeAndre Hunter had 10. Look at that. Just a, Both teams did well, like, sharing the ball with each teammate. So, everybody got involved. That's the thing we like seeing here. So we go over here and look at these numbers real quick. Both teams didn't really shoot that well from the three-point line right there. But we did have an 11-point lead at one point for Nashville. I would did have a three-point lead at one point. But all in all, pretty good Christmas Day game. So we'll move it on to the next game on schedule. Arizona uses a big fourth quarter outscoring OKC 22-9 to to pull away with the 91-78 road victory on Christmas Day. If you look at the box score right here, Bradley Bill had 26 points for OKC, but was literally by himself. Didn't really have any help behind them. Najif Ahmed had 8 points, 5 assists on 4-4 four four shooting, though. But you need someone else to score double figures, especially if you're going to win a game in this league. You come over here to Arizona. They are led by Terrence Ross. He had 20 points in this one. He had DeJounte Murray with 15 points. Gorgeous Niang had 14 points. Just really good team effort in this one for Arizona to come back and get the road W as you look at the stats real quick. Just, yep. Arizona, good Christmas Day win. Let's move on to the next game. D.C. comes on the road and dominates Colorado Springs, winning by 21 in this one, 101 to 80. M.B. led the way with 20 and 11 for the Ducks. Halliburton had 18 points. Justin Jackson off the bench, six minutes, had 11 points. Cade Cunningham with 10 points. Our custom prospect, Clyde Blackheart, three points on one of 11 shooting. That's that's rough. That is very rough. As we come over here to the... RT? God! Okay, RT leading the way with...
Is that it? Okay, custom prospect Marky Walker with 20 points in this one. You got RJ Barrett with 16. Kelly Olenek had 12 and 10 with 6. Man, good game. They just dominated this game. Not T with 27. That's crazy. Looking at the stats for both teams real quick. Impressive W. 23 point lead at one point for DC. That moves us on to our next game in action. So let's get into it. The Kansas City Bison used the big first quarter to just ease their way to a 91 to 76 victory over the visiting Richmond Rams. Luca led the way with a triple double, 31, 11, and 11 in this game for the Bison. Bogdanovich had 17 to help him out. There is Baisley had 12. Andrew Wiggins had 11. Yeah, to make sure you know, you know, I just talked about Aaron Wiggins earlier. Four points for quickly on two of 11 shooting. He was really the only downfall for them. Jay Walking leading the way for the Richmond Rams with 14.7 assists in that one. Tobias Harris had 14 points. James Wiseman 12 and 7. Kai Jones had 11 and 3 and 8 minutes. LeBron didn't really do that well. He had 8, 3, and 4 in the game. Follow 2 of 10. Rough game for him. Norman Powell 1 of 8. As you look at these numbers. Yeah, not hot. Richmond never led. 21 point lead at one point for Kansas City. Well, Let's keep the video moving. Next game up next. The Nevada Warbirds use a big second quarter and big fourth quarter to blow the door out of Tampa Bay. 82 to 57. The Sharks just couldn't keep up in this one. For Nevada, they were led by Derrick Rose's 20 points. J.D. Davidson had 15 points. Javen Delore, he's that kid from Duke, he had 13 points. Nick Richards. This this team just had big men to score, didn't they? Huh. Jalen Johnson played that shit, one of twelve, but besides that, everybody else did their job. And Ty Jerome led the way with nine points. For the Sharks, Kevin Love shot three of thirteen, two of eleven. They score eleven points. Lonzo only had five points on two of twelve, yeah. Yeah, that's rough. Looking through all these numbers. They have a 26-point lead. Crazy. Alright, let's move on to the next game. Milwaukee on D. It's a three-point game. Yep, that one goes in there. No and then 10 points for the franchise. Yes, smart choice. I really like that play. Now a timeout called by Milwaukee. And getting those points the hard way. Oakland making a switch here as the bookies checked in. And we've got an update here, so let's catch up with David Aldridge. During that last break, Kevin, I got a chance to hear what Quinn Snyder said to his team. He said, if you're going to pull this out, we have to do it as a team. We have to rely on one another, trust one another, and help one another. Let's go get this. Kevin, back to you. Okay, David, thanks. And a chance there to look back at the stunning mobile one block a moment ago. And a block like that sends a message. One that says we're not giving up this lead. Calling for the ball in crucial moments. Morant steps up when it matters most. And so in the game for Oakland, the franchise is out there with Maxi. Then there's Mobile. Then there's Larry Nance. And it's Ezebuke in its center. Down to five on the shot clock. Here's Maxi. And that'll be two free throws coming up. Officials on the call with the foul. And an important part of every team's game, a look at the hustle stats for Oakland. Contested shots and block shots. That's been their bread and butter defensively, giving up no easy looks. But also, they put the offense on its heel. Look at the number of steals they've been able to get. And that's something they also can take great pride in. Green, he's checked in for Larry Nance. And so Green will bring it up for Oakland. High point lead, the biggest of the game. And Pirtle pulls it down. Williams with the ball. He's picked up by Mobley. Williams can't hit. This is the shot you want right at the rim. He just couldn't deliver. The franchise passes to Azubuki. Over Brunson. Azubuki, no good. They've got to take the first good shot they can find. 
And even if they make it, they need an immediate foul no matter who catches the ball. Now here's Morant, the layup off target. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on John Morant. And so he's picked up his final foul. He will sit for the rest of this game. Taking two shots. So he goes two for two at the line. And it's a seven-point game. I'm out of this hole. I just think they have to focus on the moment. Don't worry about the score. Worry about executing the next play. For three, Smith. It's not going to go for him. Now here's Johnson. So it's Oakland picking up the win. This was a hard-fought, well-earned victory for him, Greg. They really had to work for this win. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, weaker teams might have buckled at the end with the crowd amped up, everyone in the building. John ja Morant and the Milwaukee Cheeses hosted the Oakland Oaks on this Christmas Day. And Oakland got the 84-77 victory in this one. John ja Morant on Mark Grizzly, he led the way with 29 points. Aaron Holiday in nine minutes had 11 points. Jalen Brunson had 10 points, five rebounds, six assists. Good game for Jalen in this one. Denny had eight points, Quentin Grimes seven. Everybody did their job. Just couldn't get stops to beat Oakland. Tyrese Maxey, 16 points to lead the way. Max Truce had 15. Shout out to the homie Jaden Barr. 12.6 assists in this one. Josh Minnett. Midnight? I don't know. He had 12 points. Jamichael Green at 11. Evan Mobley with 10 and 9. Look at that. You're going to win a game when six players have double figures. That's automatic. Like, if you're going to have that many score double figures as we look at these stats, you're going to win the game. But it was a red, uh, pretty close game. Seven points was just the biggest lead of this whole game. Milwaukee never led, but seven points. That's close and really a good game, so... We'll move on to the next game in this episode. Here's Barnes. Montrez Harrell is out there with Nemanja Bielica. Then it's Desmond Bain. Then there's Kyle Kuzma. And it's Jones in at the two. Now here's Barnes. Gobert. He nails it. And we're tied. Rudy Gobert is so competitive. Doesn't want to let a big moment go by. Nicely done. Kuzma, the pass to Harrell. Shot from 12. And it's Gobert with a rebound. Gobert's got double-digit rebounds now in the game. Outside Barnes. Shot clock at five. there to take the lead but a miss for New York they've gone just six of 14 in this final quarter Kuzma outside pass to Bain lets it fly Count it! big time shot sending his teammates into a frenzy I'll tell you these guys have worked so hard together everyone pulling in the same direction beautiful to watch it's stolen by Kuzma There's the drive, and Gobert with a block. Now this is the calling card for Rudy Gobert, a superb shot blocker. The wingspan is a thing of beauty. So it's the home team now. Six on the shot clock. Here's Bain. No good, off the front rim. And this is a shot he can definitely make, and the defense not a factor at all. Now eight seconds separating the two clocks. Kicks it out to Barnes. Oh, there's the alley! How about the time focus, time the, time the poise, the willingness to take the big out. shot by Alfred Payton? Now a timeout called by New York. He took a bad shot out there. Really, a level of offensive consistency most players can only dream of. Lamb up top, over to the wing. And here's Payne outside. Ooh, no good there. Potential game winner was off the mark. Time expires. We're going to overtime. And we'll be back right after this. 
Shooting for Las Vegas. Kyrie Irving at the line for two. He drops the first one, and that gives him a four-point cushion. I think you know that Kyrie Irving has such great love and passion for the game of basketball. This guy is on fire to get better. They've got Desmond Bain. Montrez Harrell is out there with Kyle Kuzma. Then there's Jeremy Lamb, and it's Gobert with a rebound. For Las Vegas, they've gotten only three of seven shots to go in OT. Pass to Korkmaz. Back to Brooks. Clock at four. Got it off in time to beat the shot clock, but it's no good. And they're pushing it up. The putback. It's good on the putback. Kuzma's got five points now this quarter. Oh, not one to lack confidence. Kuzma won't hesitate to pull the trigger in the big moments. Not afraid. Here's Irving. Ooh, Harold with the denial. Money. Rudy Gobert. And New York shooting at about 44% so far. Brooks against Kuzma. Pass to Lamb. Just five to shoot. Shoots from the line. Brooks with the rebound. Irving with it. Oh, a nice one-handed slam right there. Looking to close things out. That might have been the nail in the coffin. Back to Harrell. Pass to Bain. Now Kuzma. Off target from outside. They've been a different squad here in overtime. I'm just not seeing the same energy level. Here's Korkmaz. The visiting club takes the win on the road. They escaped with the W, even though they needed a few extra minutes to pull it off. Yeah, and both teams gave their all. But when it came down to overtime... Las Vegas is able to pull it out in overtime in New York to take down the Nightmare by a score of 106-99. Kyle Kuzma led the way with 26 for the Nightmare. Desmond Bain with 25 to help him out. Two players with 25-plus points and you lose. That's got to hurt. Cameron Payne had 13 points. Jeremy Lamb, 12 points. Herbert Jones with 8 points. Man. Two players scored 25 points and they lost. Kyrie drops 32 in this one. <clears throat> 32, 5 rebounds. Just really good shooting performance by him. Rudy Gobert, 22 and 16. Dylan Brooks had 13. Josh Bell. No, Jordan Bell. Why do I always say Josh Bell? I think of Josh Bell from MLB. 7 points, 11 rebounds for Jordan Bell. Dang, it just sucked that they had two, they had two players score 25-plus points and just not able to win. Look at that. They got outscored by 30 in the paint. That's rough. That's rough. And it was a pretty close game, the 7-point win, with, in fact, the biggest lead of the game also. So, Pretty good game right there. So we'll move on to the next game in this episode. The L.A. Palms sneak away a six-point victory from the Carolina Cougars on the road by a score of 90-84. to 84. The Cougars were led by Jordan Clarkson's 21 points. Jabari Parker had 16. T.J. Warren with 12. James Robinson... Jer my bad, I said James. Jeremiah Robinson Earl had 12. And everybody that played scored outside of Jackson Hayes. But a really good game by Carolina. Josh Little, the homie, leading the way 23 and 7 for the points. Carl Anthony Towns with 12 points. RJ Hampton with 12 points. Yeah, they had two players score 20 points. Of course, they won. As we come over here and look at these stats real quick. And Carolina, even though their record was worse, was able to keep up with LA. L.A. did have an 11-point lead at one point. But this game is a game that is our main focus, which is 
the Illinois Steam and the Baltimore Barons, the top two seeds right now. Well, top two teams in the Eastern. And then watch the full game. Let's get into it. Season greetings and Merry Christmas to everyone joining us here at 2K Sports. It's time for a special presentation of the NBA on Christmas Day. This is Brian Anderson, joined courtside by Grant Hill and Clark Kellogg. Our reporter tonight, Allie LaForce. We've got the visitors facing the home team. Now here's Morris. Now the starting group for the visitors. Gordon Hayward is out there with Jaron Jackson. Then it's Monte Morris. Then there's Nikola Jokic. And it's Thomas in a shooting guard. Now here's Jokic. And down it goes. Nicola Two points. Jokic. All right, Grant, go back to your career a little bit now. Talk about some of your more memorable Christmas Day games. Wow. You know, I think my most memorable was my first Christmas Day game. In 1996, we played in Chicago. Jackson, yeah, you know, I had a, first a nice 27 foul. against Scotty Pippen. But foul. in fairness to Pip, he gave me 27 as well. So we kind of evened out. Here's Buckets, guarded by Morris. Just five to shoot. Here's Buckets. Oh, and Jackson with the block. And it's Morris penetrating. Comes up empty down low. Outside Brogdon. Down low. Oh, deflected. Bridges. Well, the jumper's good from inside six feet. Well, I tell you what, it's obvious Bridges takes great pride in working through contact and capitalizing. Hayward outside. Back to Morris. Pass to Thomas. Hayward outside. Shoots from the elbow. Nice jump shot. Gordon you know, Hayward. it's not everybody's favorite shot. It's a little harder than people think, that mid-range jumper. But Gordon Hayward, he's confident in that stroke. Now here's Brogdon. Here's the break. Hayward outside. Shot clock at six. Here's Thomas. Had a miss there on the triple. And dominating at a mid-major university. Some scouts question Siakam's level of competition during the 2016 draft process, especially since his numbers were so good. Just taking it right to the rim, and no one was there to greet him. Well, this early, they should be showing a lot more energy on defense. It's not there. Now here's Jokic. Out to Hayward for three. That falls. Nice feed from Jokic. Hayward's got five now. Also affecting Siakam's draft stock, huh? He was three or four years older than many of his peers. But what's interesting is that player evaluation has become such a science. But sometimes the variables can lead you astray, and you have to go by... Oh, my goodness! Oh. Well done by Hayward on the assist that time. He's able to spot a wide-open teammate because he plays with his head up. Once again, an explosive highlight on the AT&T 5G slam can. Brogdon, the pass to Siakam. And the call will be against Nikola Jokic. That's his first foul. And yeah, he, he still was moving at the point of contact. Those are always tough to judge, but I think the official got that one right. And that was a great replay we just saw of our mobile one block. That'll put some fear into the shooters, and he made sure to do it early, too. Here's Buckets. Pass to Green. The three is up. Jokic grabs the board. It's Hayward on the wing. Morris outside. Here's Thomas. There's the triple. Not going to go that time. He just couldn't overcome the perimeter coverage. Shut him down. Here's Buckets. Boy, he's been patient so far. Nothing yet on the scoreboard. Just 
Jackson against Brogdon. Jackson gets the bucket. And they've settled in quickly today. A nice flow and rhythm to their offense. Yeah, they're lasered in. I mean, really making the most of their possessions. Yeah, they're hoping to turn things around with this timeout. Yeah, you know, they had to do something, anything to stop this run. You can't just let it go off. Bridges against Jackson. And Siakam with the slam. Well, I tell you, Bridges doing a nice job there, and his teammates appreciate when he looks to get them involved. Morris outside. Here's Jokic. It's rebounded by Pascal Siakam. It does not get much easier than that, but somehow he came up empty there. Two shots, two makes. Off to a good start. And just a straight baller move from Siakam. I mean, shrugging off the coverage and keeping his focus on that basket. Pass to Jokic. And they double up Jokic. Morris for three. Gets the three to fall. Defensively, you have to stay connected to him on the perimeter. Outside Brogdon. And he banks in the layup. Good trickery that time with the ball by Brogdon. Nice finish as well. Morris outside. Pass to Thomas. Let's it go from deep. The rebound by Bridges. Here's Buckets. Guarded by Morris. Here's Buckets. And misses it off the right side of the rim. Jokic up top. Morris outside. Back to Jokic. Just five on the clock. The kick out to Morris. The shot is good on the assist by Jokic. Three points. Jokic has got his third assist of the night. Two minutes remaining in the first. Two minutes. Here's Buckets. Guarded by Morris. Pass to Brogdon. Now Green launches it. Can't get it to go. Making him 0 for 2. Here's Thomas. Still getting warmed up offensively. No buckets yet in the game from him. He is 0 for his last however many this quarter, guys. Might need to get him out and let him settle down a bit here. And the evolution of Siakam continues. Seeing him make great passes like this proves he's only getting better. Ooh, scary thought. Morris passes to Hayward. And they recover it. Jokic. Here's Thomas. And he wills that one in. Sinking it right through the back of the iron. Well, it wasn't a pretty start for him, but now he's got a bucket to build on. Time out there. You know, Jokic was offered a multi-year deal in Europe back in 2015, but then had a horrible outing, and the team backed away from him. One oh three left in the first. Pass to Williams. Here's Claxton. Left side, Green. Off the mark with the outside fadeaway. Well, you know he wants that one back. I mean, more often than not, he'll sink that mid-range jumper. Here's the Prophet. Green covering. And he got the whistle on the way up. So he'll be headed to the line for a pair. Personal foul. First team And he drops a first. At the line for the away team. And he makes both free throws. Making shots at the line. You need a good routine, and he certainly has one. Pass to Claxton. And we've got 28 seconds left in the opening quarter. Deflected! Here's Bull. Back to Rondo. Pocket six. Oh, from deep. Claxton with a rebound. And so the first quarter is in the books. 
up by nine. And quarter number two will get underway just after this short break. Here in this one. Well, it's simple. I mean, they started off strong, and they've been hot from beyond the arc since the get-go. Well, the player and ball movement has been excellent. Finding space, operating in space, and when they've gotten open shots, they've knocked them down. We've got Maxi Kleba, and it's Thomas in a small forward. All right, Clark, in your heyday, you were a real force on the glass. What impresses you about today's rebounding experts? Well, the rebounding piece of the game has not changed. It's all about timing, positioning, and desire to retrieve the ball. And I had that, and rebounding is universal and timeless. If you can rebound at the highest level in college, then typically you're a good rebounder in the pros. And if you rebound in the pros in the 50s or 60s, you'd be able to rebound in the pros in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. So that part of my game, I know, without any doubt, would still transfer today. Pass to the Prophet. On the take. And he makes it on the layup. Well, the defense allowed that one. He had a clear path to the cup. Here's Claxton. Back to Pritchard. Outside for Green. The 17-footer. They grab their own miss. And so he draws the foul, headed to the line to shoot a pair. Yeah, and you never want to let shots at the rim go uncontested. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, that's the message they were sending with that foul. Nothing easy inside. And that's good as he hits both shots. And they seem to have taken a more heads-on approach this quarter <laughs> and is getting them to the free throw line. Yeah, I don't think it's an accident that aggressiveness correlates with playing better. So the aggressiveness is starting to pay off. Thomas, that's good. Hey, they're just getting pushed around inside. Yeah, you can't say that with enough emphasis. I mean, the defenders are just not being aggressive enough down low. You got to play with some physicality in the paint. Here's Pritchard. And they get it back. And it's Thomas with the rebound. Well, that's a rare miss for him inside. He may have just rushed it a bit. Maybe lost concentration, too. Well done on the glass. Gets himself in position where he can use his size. Cole grabs the board. You know, sometimes making it difficult for him to finish at the rim is all you can ask for from the defense. The profit. That's good. You're not going to get stops against him unless you give an effort. Priority and goal number one has to be tightening up the defense. They can't afford to give him open looks. Back to Pritchard. Down to five on the shot clock. Top of the key. Got a hand on it. They recover it. And it's Thomas with the rebound. Thomas has got his fifth rebound in this one. Let's check in with our reporter, Allie LaForce. Well, how do I put this? Nikola Jokic, not the most chiseled physique. He said when he first made the NBA, there were no oh, wait, muscles. Foul. None. Now I have a couple, he said. To be honest, I like being a little bit heavier because guys are pushing me. I need that weight. It's funny, they say. Quote, he's not even in shape. I'm playing in 80 games, and they still say it. Brian? Ah, the Joker indeed, Allie. Thanks for that. Fast break. Here we go. Here's Rondo. Three-pointer, no good. Shame to see that wide-open look go to waste. He just lacks range. So it'll be two free throws. He was fouled in the act of shooting. He wasn't quite as assertive as he needed to be in the first quarter, but now he's taking a more head-on approach and getting himself to the line. So he picks up just one from the line that time. He hails from a small town in Serbia. Jokic played basketball, but also a number of other sports that he credits for his current skill set. Yeah, he says water polo helped with the one-hand passes, and volleyball helped with the tip-ins. And the harness racing, well, who knows? But he was obsessed with it. And it's the profit missing. Just under three and a half minutes played here in the second quarter. Buckets. Oh, and there's the whistle on the shot. So Jaren two free throws Jackson. for him coming up. Second personal foul. Jaron Jackson picks one up. No good on that one. At the line for the Barons. Two shots. So he comes up empty, missing both. 
Hayward, right side. Pass to Morris. From deep. And they force the shot clock violation. Great D. All right, here's a different question for you, partner. I'll be taking notes. Did you have a favorite city for food in the NBA? We'll write this down, B.A. So my mom is from New Orleans, so I know New Orleans very well. And so New Orleans was my favorite city, no question. The food there, oh, I'm getting full just thinking about it. <laughs> Three-pointer, Bridges. The rebound by Jackson. Here's the profit. He's got six. And that makes him three for four. He's looking good. Time and time again, they're creating good looks from close range. And even under pressure in close, I think they've still done a good job maintaining concentration and converting the opportunities. Siakam, the pass to Brogdon. Back to Siakam. No good that time. Oh, and Jackson with the defensive effort. Here's the Prophet. Tipped. Boy, a really good shot blocker for a wing. Bridges elevates quickly and has an excellent sense of time. And he was fouled team. while in the act of shooting, so he'll first, take two free foul. throws. Foul. That's good from Siakam. Pascal Siakam taking two shots. And so he makes both from the line. An incredibly improved player. Pascal Siakam scored just four points a game as a rookie, then seven in his second year. But Siakam worked hard, becoming an all-star in year four, almost scoring 23 per game. And they'll get another chance. And he's going to the line for two. The, the official the saw contact while he was going up. Jokic. First one falls Jokic. for him. You know, we've seen Jokic embrace a larger leadership role. He wants to be the guy that leads his team. And that's not just with scoring, it's also with his voice. Here's Buckets, guarded by Morris. And there's the lob, and it's Bridges with the jam. Perfect communication and timing on that alley-oop. Bridges saw the opening and then bounced right to the rim. Baltimore foul. First personal foul, third team foul. And here is Morris. Six points for him. Jackson finds some space. The rebound by Bridges. Yeah, you have to knock those down. Open shots inside the arc are rare in this league. Good on the shot, and that shaves the lead to single digits. Bridges has got four points in the quarter. Boy, look how easily Bridges shoots through the contact there. I mean, his mechanics are strong, as is his body. Pass to the Prophet. The three. That's good. For the day, he's four for six. Very consistent tonight at the offensive end. Right there, he helps fuel the fire. Here's Buckets. Oh, and Jackson with the block. The attention to detail on defense. Jackson reads shooters well and knows when to go for blocks. Morris down low. Oh, and he got fouled on his way up. He'll head to the line to shoot two. Fourth team foul. Shooting for the away team. That free throw good for Morris. Monday Morris at the line for two. Both free throws good from Morris. Yeah, they, they're really cashing in more at the line here in the second quarter. Definitely, that's one of the reasons they're in front right I'm now. Yeah, hoping to tap into something that'll get them clicking. Yeah, and you know, that's going to be the focus of this timeout. They need to come up with a... minute 35 left in the first half of this one three-pointer is up from Brogdon Jokic grabs the board Jokic has got rebound number seven tonight to the paint here's Jackson and a foul called on the way up so he'll take two from the free throw line first personal foul it goes on Malcolm Brogdon one of the jewels at the at top the of that 2018 draft Jared Jackson has made a huge impact at both ends and he's still reaching his full potential. Good on both. Really always a plus to have a big guy stroke it from the line like that. The soft touch on full display. 
Inside, here's Siakam. Nice dish, and the layup goes down. Siakam's got eight. And just using every inch of his incredible wingspan, Siakam is able to make some creative finishes. Pass to Thomas. There's the three. The rebound by Bridges. It's impressive how they've overcome his cold streak tonight. Everyone stepping in to fill the gap. Outside Brogdon. Six on the shot clock. Sinks that one from the post. Brogdon's got his second basket of the game. You know, Malcolm Brogdon is not the biggest guy, but that does not stop him from being aggressive and assertive inside. Pass to Hayward. Here's Thomas. The three. That one's good. And it's Hayward with the setup. Hayward's got three assists in the game. And just not letting up at all. I mean, you have to love this approach. You want to get the ball to the guys who make plays. If it's working, keep working it. That's what I say. Keep the pressure on it. Two-second difference between shot and game clock. Morris outside. To the middle. Jokic is doubled. The three is up. Played it in with a nice oh, touch off Jokic. the window. Jokic has got his third bucket of the night. Jokic doing a nice job there boxing out the defense to earn a second chance shot. So we conclude the first half. Leading by 14. Stay with us, folks. We'll be back just after halftime to get the third quarter started. It's the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hello again, folks. Ernie Johnson here with Kenny the Jet Smith and Shaquille O'Neal. It's the NBA on 2K Sports, and let's talk the first half. Checking out the visiting team. Kenny, how'd you feel about it? Well, they built this lead in large part because of the sharpshooters off the bench. The subs played a superb game. Get it? Sub, superb. Oh, I'm rolling tonight. <laughs> I mean, they played like starters. And, big fella, let's get your thoughts on the home team. They're getting abused in the paint defensively, letting their opponents set the tone. You can't match up physically, you're toast. That's what the scoreboard is reflecting right now. Toast with butter. And that'll do it for us. The third quarter about to begin with Kevin Harlan standing by. We'll catch you on the flip side. My brother. Jokic has gotten three of his four shots to fall, hitting 75%. Miles Bridges is out there with Pascal Siakam. Then it's Malcolm Brogdon. Then it's Green. And it's Buckets in at the point guard position. Brogdon, the pass to Bridges. And, yep, it's good. Boy, Bridges using his strength to get the and one to go and igniting his team in the process. Clark, a utility player like Miles Bridges, who can more or less do it all, has the ability to be such a difference maker for a team. Boy, B, I love the way this young man has improved and what he brings to the table. He makes an impact because he plays well at both ends, and he's really added to his offensive game. He can shoot the mid-range jump shot out to the three-point line, and he's an excellent driver as well. And on the floor for Dwayne Casey starting the second half. We've got Jackson. He's out there with Gordon Hayward. Nikola Jokic is out there with Monte Morris. And it's Thomas in at the shooting guard position. Well, guys, they need to do something to reduce this deficit. We'll see if that's the answer. Pulls it. Buckets with a rebound. Thomas has gone three of nine tonight from the field. Here's Siakam. And too long on the shot. Defense made an impact right there. Definitely got him uncomfortable going up with him. Morris outside. The three ball. The rebound by Bridges. Bridges has got four rebounds in the game. Coming out stone cold here. Sometimes the break will do that to you. No good there. That would have cut it to single digits. Just one for four from the field. Not the way they wanted to start the second half. And Jackson gets double teamed. Here's Hayward. And the layup is good after a nice lead pass. Hayward's got seven points in the game. And that's got to be a relief. Finally getting something to go here in the second half. Hayward with a steal. Here's the break. Pass to Thomas. It's stolen by Brogdon. 
into the third. Two minutes in now. Here's Buckets to the inside. And the basket by Bridges. He's shooting well, doing his best to keep this offense in gear. But he hasn't had a lot of support. Morris outside. Here's Thomas. He's covered by Siakam. Clock at four. Morris for three. Pascal Siakam with a rebound. Morris has gone just two of seven from the floor here. Pass to Buckets. Oh, he gets it to fall, and that makes it just a single-digit deficit. Terrific design and execution, leading to an opportunity right at the rim. To the left wing. Siakam against Jokic. The kick out to Morris. And the three off target. Oh, man, he can't get anything to fall. You can feel his frustration. And he's got to find other ways to contribute then because his shot making is not happening right now. It's just been a brutal outing for him. He still hasn't managed to make a shot. And the team is struggling because of it. Here's Jackson. Excellent D there from Siakam. Jackson's gone one for three from the field here. Outside Brogdon. Bridges outside. Brogdon, the pass to Siakam. Basket is good on the assist from Brogdon. Siakam's got 12 points. A long swing player. Siakam uses that 6'9 link down low. You know Malcolm Brogdon is a guy who can get it done offensively. His shooting percentage really speaks for itself. Pass to Thomas. Here's the profit. Three-pointer. Rebounded by Green. You really do have to respect Brogdon's offensive game. I think he's clearly a guy who puts in the work. You're exactly right, B.A. He does put in the work. He's a high-effort player, both when it's game time and behind the scenes. You don't see percentages like his without a lot of hours being spent in the practice gym. Six to shoot. Here's Thomas. Another miss. They desperately need a bucket. Thomas has gone only three of ten here from the floor. And he lobs it up. Gets a hand on it. Oh, and Jackson with the block. Here's the profit. 11 points in the game. And his fifth basket. Now five for eight. Looking comfortable out there. So good at getting to his spots and then cashing in, making the game look easy. Pass to Pritchard. got a piece of it here's Thomas he's got seven here's Pritchard oh it's blocked by Jackson here's the prophet 13 points in the game. Pass to Jackson. Blocked! Williams with it. Back to Green. Here's Garuba. Well, he hasn't put up any points yet in this one. Here's Pritchard. And it comes off the front of the rim. Hayward against Williams. Hayward, the pass to Jackson. Chalk up two there. Jerry and trust Jackson. me, when the D's slow to react, he'll be the first guy to make them pay. Boy, the two defense looks shell-shocked. I mean, they're on the ropes right now, on their heels. And he was fouled while in the act of shooting, so he'll take two free throws. Second personal foul. Second team foul. And the first one at the line is good. Bowl, he's checked in for Jackson. At the line for two. So he gets them both. 151 left in the third. Pass to Bowl. Here's Thomas. Green covering. Here's the profit. Shot clock at five. Williams grabs the board. 
125 left to play in the third. Kept alive. And that one's good. That'll drive your coach crazy, failing to box out. Ugh. Those are free points you're giving away. you got to work harder on the glass. Here's the profit. 13 points in the game. Nails it from three. Thomas. Thomas has got three 10. Points. He drilled one from deep in the first half, doing it again here in the second. There's 53 seconds left in the third quarter of the game. From 15 feet away, Bowl grabs the board. Pass to the Prophet. Goes up from the top of the key, and he'll throw the foul. He'll head to the line for two. First team foul. The first one falls. Morris, he's checked in for Hayward. Taking two shots. That's also good, so he hits both free throws. 36 seconds left in the third quarter. Here's Pritchard. Well, he hasn't scored yet, but I'm sure that'll change. Here's Buckets. No good from outside. Here's Bull. Pass to Morris. And it's Kleba off the drive. Here's the profit. Here's the three. Gets the three ball to go. 18 points for him. He's been shooting with great consistency tonight. Love to see that confident play on offense. Here's Buckets. Oh, that one's off. Still out of sync. Well, through three quarters of play, down double digits. It may be difficult to overcome. Up by 15. And time for a short break. Stay right there. The fourth quarter is coming up next. Coach Casey imploring his guys to be smart with it. A sound strategy. Dwayne Casey proving what a great communicator he is. And one quarter to go in a game that, to this point, has not been an evenly fought contest. Nicholas Claxton out there with Miles Bridges. Then it's Pascal Siakam. Then it's Malcolm Brogdon. And it's Buckets in at the point. Shooting for the away team. And the second free throw is good. Here's Buckets. Up top, Bridges. And there's a whistle. He'll head to the line to shoot two. Bridges brings a toughness to his team's interior scoring because of his athleticism, physicality, and aggressiveness. Miles Bridges. Two shots. Bridges hits them both. Now Morris. Pass to Jokic. Shoots over Siakam. And it's Jokic missing. Siakam outside. It's hauled in by Nikola Jokic. Jokic has got the glass covered here tonight. That's 11 boards for him. He takes it in. Yes, it's good. We see this every night. He has the skill and versatility to keep a defense guessing. Bridges outside. Pass to Brogdon. Wing shot on the way. Bull grabs the board. Here's Thomas to the paint. Here's Bull. Down low. That shot off. Ooh, some solid defense from Brogdon. Here's Buckets, guarded by Morris. Pass to Claxton. And here's Bridges. Clock at six. Jokic grabs the board. Morris outside. Jokic in the post. He's guarded by Bridges. Count the basket. That gives him a double-double. That's Monte been typical Morris. of their performance today. They're sharing the ball and creating good shots. Really a prime example of the difference in how these teams have operated offensively. Much more individual play at the other end. Pass to Claxton. To the middle. 11 feet out. Offensive rebound. Outside Brogdon. 
Driving inside, and it's rejected. Over two and a half minutes in the books here in the fourth. Here's Thomas. He's covered by Siakam. Pass to the Prophet. From deep three-point range, it doesn't go for him. Would you say testing the limits of his range there? You know, guys, I think he's got confidence to shoot it from anywhere, but he could have gotten a better one than that. To stop the drought. Shots good by Buckets. What an incredible ankle breaker to help create space for his shot. Morris outside. Pass to the Prophet. Fires for three. Oh, he drains the three, and he'll go to the line for one more. It goes on Malcolm Brogdon. Green's check in for Claxton. And with so much player movement nowadays, Clark, a lot of small market teams nervous about attracting and retaining the stars. You know, B.I. played for a small market team, the Indiana Pacers, in the early 80s when I played the short time I did in the NBA. And that's always a challenge to be able to keep your star players in your market because there is more attractive real estate out there when you think about other cities in the league. And players do have a desire sometimes to be in larger markets where the lights are bigger and brighter and there are more people. And I don't know if there's anything the league can really do to keep players from desiring to move on occasion. Oh, plenty of contact on that shot. Miles Officials Bridges. call the foul, and he'll first, take two free throws now. It's going to be on Miles foul. Bridges. That one's off. At the line for the away team, Jaron Jackson. He hits the second from the line. Here's Buckets. Boy, they need something to go to regain some confidence. No question. Way too many empty possessions for them. Brogdon, the pass to Green. From outside, off the mark. And they're plus five on the boards after that rebound. Pass to the Prophet. Fires the three. The putback. It's rebounded by Pascal Siakam. Here's Bridges. There's another block. A defensive stalwart so far. That's six blocks. Protecting the rim well. Love the hustle. Hayward against Green. It's Hayward on the wing. Over Green. Beats the shot clock, but can't get it to fall. Here's Bridges. Basket is good on the assist from Brogdon. Brogdon's got his third assist of the night. Defense having really no effect on Bridges. He just keeps producing with no sign of slowing down. Here's Morris. Off the mark with a little step back, Jay. Sometimes it's just not your night. Fortunately, his teammates have picked up the slack. It's been that kind of quarter for him. The shot has just been unreliable. Jackson, right side. Puts it up from 12. It's tipped. Jokic against Brogdon. Pass to Bridges. Uses the glass on the layup. Bridges has got 11 in the second half. Yeah, you know what? He's a skilled passer, so if you leave people open oh, around see. Brogdon, he'll make you wish you did. Win. Pass to the Prophet. And here's Jackson. He's guarded by Bridges. Now here's Hayward. Jokic with it. Five to shoot. Out to the right wing. The Prophet. And it goes as the official calls the foul. Count it, and he'll shoot one more at the line. Shooting. And the developmental path for top prospects is evolving. Clark, it was recently announced a new high school league for the top Two powerhouses. The well, you could almost see this coming, B.A., again, creating additional pathways for young players to pursue their professional dreams would lead to other types of competition in the NBA. So we'll see how it plays out. But um, I'm not totally opposed to it. Again, it's a small percentage of players that would be part of this type of tournament or league. So let's see where it goes. Pass to the Prophet. Shot on the wing. Second shot opportunity. And so he draws the foul, headed to the line to shoot a pair. 
That's a nice job by Jokic getting fouled in the act, and we know he's going to cash in most times. For the away team. And so he hits both. A minute 29 left in the fourth. Here's Garuba. And stolen by Jokic. Here's the Prophet. Garuba with a rebound. Here's Ellaby. He's covered by Holiday. On the wing, Bledsoe. Inside. Here's Ellaby. And it's good. Assisting on the play was Bledsoe. You know, when Bledsoe is dishing it like this, it makes everybody better. I want to keep seeing him do just this. There's 48 seconds left in the fourth quarter. They really came in with the right mindset today. I can guarantee you their flight home will be filled with some smiles. Yep, to have a stress-free win on the road, very satisfying. The fans are already headed for the exit. Here's Ellaby. He's covered by Holiday. Brissett down low. Kleba on him. It's good. Well, I love the way he goes after it there. I mean, and you've got to respect that. He's rewarded for his efforts of pursuing the ball. Here's the profit. It's deflected. Pass to Jokic. Goes back up. Here's Ellaby. The visiting club takes the win on the road. This one wasn't even close. The hometown crowd was waiting for a miracle that never came. Yeah, and this team was consistent throughout. They met every challenge, and they earned this dub. All right, let's go courtside to Ali LaForce with our player of the game. Ali, it's all yours. Nicola, congratulations on the win. What does a win like this say about your team? I mean, we are looking for each other. We are finding it. It's, it's uh, when we start playing like we are supposed to play, we are really good. So hopefully we're going to continue to play like this. Thanks, Nicola. Back to you guys. Allie, thank you as always. Thank you for joining us. That'll do it for now. For Grant Hill, Allie LaForce, and Clark Kellogg, this is Brian Anderson thanking you all for tuning in tonight. We'll see you next time. I honestly thought the battle of the top two teams would be closer than <laughs> a 20-point blowout. Illinois, 74-54 victory on the road. Just no competition at all from Baltimore in this one. Miles Bridges, this is Miles. Yep, Miles led the way with 19 points. Siakam had 12 points. Chet hit seven free throws for his seven points. Look at me with, yeah, yeah, not going to. Do triple six. Yeah. That's cursed. Brogdon with four. Three and four. Yeah. Did not a good game for them. Shali Ahmed. Look at the custom prospect leading the way with 25 points. Jokic 14 and 17 with five assists. Cam Thompson. I said Thompson. Thomas had 12 points. Really, really good game. For Illinois. Did you look at these numbers. Do it. Wow. They went 0 for 9 from the 3 point line. Jesus. That's crazy. Didn't lead at all. Illinois had a 22 point lead at one point. Alright. Well the game of the day did not. Turn out to be what we thought it was going to be. So let's just move on to the next game. Memphis and uh, Minneapolis met in Minneapolis to start the season and they get their second matchup of the year on Christmas Day. And Memphis gets a 14 point win in this one, 98 to 84. John Collins leading the way for Memphis with 22. Shout out to the homie D'Lo. He had 20 points, 3 rebounds, 3 assists, 3 steals, just everywhere. And Davion Mitchell had 16 points. Vucevic, 15 points. Marking them, 12 points. Yeah, five players in double figures. You're usually going to win a game like that. We come over here and look at the Lumberjacks, who were led by Franz Wagner. Franz Wagner? Whatever. He had 18 points. 
Shout out to the homie Ajax with 15 points, 3 assists, 2 steals. Jaden Ivey had 14 to help out. Conchar had 9. Bunch of guys with just, yeah, both teams played a really good game. Just Memphis had more. Uh, Minneapolis didn't lead at all. So that, that's something. 17 point lead for Memphis at one point. But we only have three more games left to go in this episode, so let's get into them. Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum, and the Thrashers could not get the job done on Christmas Day against the visiting Utah Range and lose 84 6 21, McCollum with 16, but then after that, no help. No help. In this game, for, uh, Utah, how did I have just, I just had a fucking brain fart. Donovan Mitchell, 21 points. Malik Beasley with 17. Isaiah Stewart with 10. Patrick Williams, yep, he had 7. Our custom prospect, Nafim Ahmed, had 7 points in this one also. Nasir Little with 7 points. Just good game. Good game. As we come out here, just scroll, 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 scroll. Look at these stats. All right. Two more games, two more box scores go over. Here's Young. One forty six left in the fourth quarter. And he converts the layup. Young's got 11 in the second half. This is why people are just so high on Young, because he comes through with big shots in the game. So on the floor for Minnesota, Jackson is out there with the break. Then there's Draymond Green. Then there's Brown. It's Najee in at the two spot. Now here's Reddish. Following the miss by Draymond Green. Reddish kicks to Young. 114 left in the fourth quarter and finished off by Nurkic. And the swag Nurkic plays with. It's infectious. He doesn't back down from taking a big shot. Indianapolis making a switch here. Barry's checked in. Well, this is why you run your offense through him in important situations. You know he's going to deliver. And the second chance effort by Jackson. What an effort to get the tip in. Just wanting it a little bit more. Here's Young. Minnesota with the rebound. Boy, that's one he wishes he could have back, especially against soft defense. Terry with it. Now guarded by Nurkic. Offensive rebound. It counts. And that one sends the bench into a frenzy. I'll tell you, these guys have worked so hard together. Everyone pulling in the same direction. Beautiful to watch. From the stripe, it's in! And what a sensational bucket to bring them within one. Ice in his veins. Young excels at stepping to the plate and delivering in the clutch. And it's Brown missing. Five-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Hero passes to Young. Six on the shot clock over Green. And the rejection by Jackson. And they need to stop the clock so there's a foul. That's right. No other option but to foul. And for Jalen Brown at the free throw line, he has worked so hard in his mechanics. And that's paid dividends in terms of his confidence, guys. Time called here. Indianapolis decides to talk it over. Jalen Brown. And guys, he's been about as close to perfection as you can be. The intensity he's played with has been amazing. Just no let up. And as fired up as he's been, he's never let his emotions get out of control. And the last shot is going to be reviewed. Ruled originally a basket. We'll see if it gets overturned, which would end the game. However, if it is ruled good, we'll be heading to overtime. And the NBA replay center in Secaucus is queuing it up. And, and even before we look at the replay, I, I'm pretty sure he got that off in time. Oh. 
The officials are confirming the call. The basket does count. And we are heading for overtime. Boy, oh boy, Greg, was that ever close. Kevin, it, it really was. I gotta admit, I didn't think he got it all in time. Uh, but the replay clearly showed the officials had it right. Very fitting that we're going to overtime. And that's gonna do it for regulation. So we are headed to overtime. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be back in just a moment. Indianapolis scored 30 points in a four-minute overtime to, to blow out Minnesota in OT, 116 to 98. Trey Young led the way with 35. Reggie Perry had 17. 15. Custom prospect Billiam Lavar Tyrese had 13. Cam Reyes with 11. Nurkic with 10. Yeah, all you got with double figures, you would hope they win. Jalen Brown 30 points to lead Minnesota in this one. JD. Hager, my homie, 14.7 rebounds. Moses Moody at 13. Jackson had 10.8 rebounds. We'll come over these stats real quick. Can't for 34 minutes in overtime. That's crazy. But we have one last game to get into in this video. More. So let's do it. Oh my fucking god! Our final game of Christmas Day ends up being a 20 point blowout win for Florida. 103 to 83 over the LA Knights. The Hedgehogs led by Kyle Leonard's 20 points. Mike Muscala had 16. Grayson Allen with 13. And Mark Kell, 4. Sabonis had 11 and 14. Jay Sean Tate, 6 points. Or 10 points. Kyle Lowry with 10 points. Look at all these players with 10 points. No wonder they won. Porzingis leading the way 29 for LA in this one. Middleton had 15. Will Barton with 13. Just, yeah. They're not going to win a game. And seven players on the other team scored 10, and they only had three. If you look at these stats real quick. But that brings us to the end of Christmas Day. Now the goal for the rest of this episode is that we shall go ahead sim to the 25th of January because the next video is Kobe Day, January 26th, the passing of his, uh, the anniversary of his passing. So we'll be featuring videos in that. So at the end, we're going to simulate up to here. We're going to look at all the stats and stuff like we always do. And then we're going to preview all the bad teams. And the Google Doc will start to be made. So you guys can start voting on trades. Of course, I'm going to have this sent out earlier. So if you guys follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, all that, you'll already have the link to be voting. But So that's why I always say make sure you guys follow me on my social medias. But I'm going to go ahead and sim up. To that point and then we'll go over everything all right guys time to look at the standings and we'll start out in the east nashville is now the top seed in the east at 31 and 11 baltimore staying put at second 30 and 11 illinois three at 27 and 13 montreal is the four seed 25 and 14 cincinnati 21 and 14 to 5 and toronto at six at 21 and 15 our four play-in teams right now would be the Richmond Rams 22 and 19, Tampa Bay Sharks 20 and 21, Cleveland Rockers 20 and 21, and the New York Empire are now here at 18 and 19. So on the outside looking in, it's the Pittsburgh Force, New York Nightmare, Florida Hedgehogs, Indianapolis Harvesters, Memphis Sounds, Atlanta Thrashers, DC Federals, and the Carolina Cougars are still the worst team in the league. That's so bad. That is so bad. We can already tell by the look of it that these three teams at the bottom are definitely trade deadline. Moving on to the West, Colorado Springs is still the top seed and LA is still the top uh the second team. 
Oakland is now three, Utah four, Alaska five, and Minnesota makes the jump all the way to six now. Our four playing teams would be Nevada, St. Louis, Las Vegas, and Milwaukee. Milwaukee, last time we uh, did the standings update, were in third. Now they're all the way at ten, and we have to be fighting for a playoff spot. That's crazy. The outside, we have Arizona, Kansas City, Iowa, OKC, New Orleans, Seattle, LA, and Minneapolis. And by the look of this, these three teams are basically kind of out of it. So we're looking at six teams that are trading right now Atlanta, Seattle, DC, LA Knights, Carolina, and Minneapolis. Let's go check out the stats. Zach Levine now leading the league in points, 26.7. Luka Donovan, Bradley, and Zion round out our top five rebounds. Aiton leading the way. Drummond, Capella, Embiid, and Jokic are all in the top five. Assists, Luka leading the way. Jay Walking is here. I'm here. Jokic is here. And Lonzo is here. And Steals, Butler, Jimmy. Butler, Jimmy, wow. Jimmy Butler leading the way. Blocks, Jaron Jackson is leading the way. Field goal percentage is led by Zion. Three-point percentage is led by Cade Cunningham. And free throw percentage is led by James Harden. For our rookies, leading the way, Jaden Hardy in points. Got Salih Ahmed and Marky Walker and Balil Ahmed all in the top five right there. Rebounds is led by Jalen Duran. You got John Gordon and D'Angelo Dawkins also in the top five there. Assist, Najif Ahmed is leading the way. You also got Salih Ahmed, Bali Ahmed, and D'Angelo Dawkins all in the top five. Steals leader is Paulo. You see Najif Ahmed also right there. And blocks is Tristan Kivic. And then Rex Gordon is right there in there also. But yeah, so now we have to think about, well also, let's go ahead and check out, we have award races now finally, and all-star voting, we'll start out all-star voting, Giannis leading the way out east, and we do have a custom prize pick in here, jaywalking is number six in uh, guard, so maybe we might get a custom prospect in the all-star game, we'll see, Minnesota getting the host all-star game, shout out to the monsters, uh, Luca leading out west. So that's what we got for that. And award races right now in the MVP race is Luka, Embiid, Jason Tatum, Jokic, and Giannis. For rookie of the year, we have J.D. Davidson, D'Angelo Dawkins, Chet Holmgren, got Jabari Smith, and then Billiam, LaVar, Tyrese all in here. Davidson's there, K-Love, Tyus Jones, Kevin Porter, and Keldon Johnson. Defensive player, Giannis, Thibel. Jimmy Butler, Jaron Jackson, and Vince Noel. Wow. I see names like that. <clears throat> Most improved, you got Okongwu in there, Jay Walking, DeAndre Ayton, Toscano, and Darius Garth so far. But yeah, we have six teams that will probably be trading. So we will go ahead and check out these rosters. And the first team on the list. In fact, is we'll go over Atlanta first. Actually, DC is here first, so we'll go over DC. And what what we want to do is like look for contracts, like one year deals. Uh, where where did it break down? Yeah. All right. So guys, there won't be here next year, are definitely the ones we want to focus on. So James Harden, we're gonna see if someone might want to take that big contract. Brooke Lopez, you know, we're going to be trading players that are going to be basically heading towards free agency if they don't do contract extension, which James Harden already said he's going to test free agency, and RJ said he wants to test. Brooke Lopez wants to resign, guys. I don't know when the contract extension thing is. I think it's coming up, ain't it? It should be, or is it in March? When is it? I'm trying to find out. Okay, it's March 1st when contract extensions are. But that's after it's 
When's the trade deadline? I wrote it down on my in my notepad. Trade deadline is coming up. Right? I said the trade deadline special oh trade deadline's the twenty sixth. Whoops. <clears throat> well any players that any players that be signed I'll probably just sign them before the trade deadline. But yeah. With DC, like yeah. Where you go? There we went. So like players that are on one year deals are definitely gonna be traded. Yeah, players with team options, player options, all that, you know. So DC and for the trade. As we keep moving on right here. Next team that we pull up on is Atlanta. And they're gonna have Dame locked up for they ooh, are they gonna have people locked up? Bobby Porter isn't locked up. Is it Cam Johnson? Yeah, Cam Johnson's not locked up. So they got a couple they don't really have much that they can trade. Oh, breaking Larson's hurt. Oh. What you do? Oh. What do you do? Eh. But yeah, like Dame's still locked up. DJ's locked up. So Atlanta doesn't really actually have much to trade. Carolina, on the other hand, they, they don't look like they have much to trade either. Westbrook, they can try to get rid of his contract. TJ Warren, Christian Wood, he's hurt though, so that's, he's going to end up having to stick around. The player option for Clarkson, don't know if he'll want to stick around. But basically, our goal for teams that are going to be trading is to trade like the veteran players, get them on the contenders, and get them a playoff push. You know, uh, we gotta get the Western Conference teams now. Show them some love. It's not really love if they're getting traded, but L.A. Who do they got? That's going to be like big. They really don't have anybody. Will Barton. That's really it, because they got everybody locked up, unless, because they got player option deals. Or the team option. It's a team option for these guys, so they could just let these guys walk, honestly, and try to get younger pieces if they want. And then, you got, what, Seattle and uh, Minneapolis also. Minneapolis. Jordan uh, Poole's going to be a free agent. That he can get some money. Ayo, isn't he? Wow, so free agent. You know, many yeah, Minneapolis doesn't have too much to work with. And then the last team is Seattle, and Jeremy Grant's a free agent. Kevin Porter Jr. They got they got a handful of players. John Gordon's going to be a free agent. For some reason, I don't know why. Why does it say he's not on contract? He definitely signed to a four-year deal. Okay. What? <laughs> Did they just finesse my guy? What? Did my guy just get finessed? He's making... What? He's on the... What? What? Confusion. Oh, what? I don't know. But you get the gist of it. I'm going to have the Google Doc thing created. I'll probably already send it out to a bunch of people to get their opinions on trades. Uh, But if you guys see this video, make sure. Yeah. Follow my social media. I definitely am going to be posting there more. I'm planning on making a Discord. So you guys can, like, you know, keep up with everything. That way I can, like send you guys a google doc there for you guys to go ahead and do that instead of you guys maybe missing out on the opportunity to vote on a player a player trade you know but this video is basically coming to an end next video we're going to do kobe day which kobe day is going to be these four games and like it's first to 24 wins which we'll watch the games up to 24 and then 
at that point we would just stand out and go over the box scores for those games uh but yeah we are a couple videos away from the trade deadline we got this upcoming kobe day video we're gonna do the all-star selection show with valentine's day games after that and then we'll be at the trade deadline special so hope you guys are excited about that make sure you guys like comment share subscribe turn on post notifications so you guys don't miss it up below your stream and check the description i already have the google doc made for you guys to create your custom prospect to get in here for next year so make sure you guys fill one out if you felt one out before and you just want to make another one go for it go for it i love getting everybody involved you know seeing you guys create your players but definitely make your players uh, appreciate everybody for all the love and support and i will catch you guys on the next one